my name's Georgie. I run an Instagram account called Winding Away the Weekend, which is about wine. This is Chunky, and Chunky's got a really good nose on her for a good wine too, haven't you, Sausage? Yes. Through some of the wines that I have found on my travels that are easy to come by either on online shops or in supermarkets. My belief in wine is that there should be no sort of snobbery saying that I sometimes buy ridiculous wines and appreciate that's not what everyone wants to spend money on, you know? So I'm going to try and have a bit of a spectrum with price ranges starting at, um, you know, from £5 up to £100 or whatever. So first wine, we'll start in from um, lowest to highest, but it doesn't mean anything about quality. So um, Waitrose just happens to be my local as well. So um, unfortunately, I think there might be quite a bias, but it's not because they're paying me. Wish they were. First one first is um, a Pinot Noir. This is from Romania. And Romania are actually massive producers of wine. Um, I think in 2018, they produced 5.1 million hectolitres of wine, which is an extraordinary amount. I think that was one of their records and they produced the same amount in 2013. It was a bit lower um, last year and um, probably will be this year, but this is 2020 and it's the amazing price of 5.99. I kind of bought it on a bit of a win because I know I like Romanian wine and I was just really, really impressed. It's quite good fresh out of the bottle. Um, it's a screw cap, it's just, Quick, easy drinking, perfect for sort of simple pasta dishes with a bit of tomato or, you know, just your basic kind of in the week meals. It's very fresh, got lots of red fruit flavours. Um, there's that sort of nice balsamic acidity to it as well. Makes it really good for those sort of tomatoey dishes. It's not much of a risk to take if you're spending 5 99 as my first recommendation. Second recommendation is also from Waitrose. Um, Chunky likes to look at this one. This is one of my go-to wines. It is often on offer, and if the six bottle deal is on, it's really, really, really good value, but it's normally $14.99. So this is a Chardonnay from Selenbosch in South Africa. And South Africa have actually had a really difficult, I mean, we all have. There is something called the ABC Club, apparently, um, where people say they'll drink anything but Chardonnay but they're probably the same people that turn around and order a Chablis and I don't trust people that um, say that. <laughs> it's a red flag. If someone says I don't drink Chardonnay, it's a red flag because it comes in so many different styles. I just think if you're saying, I know sausage is a good wine, isn't it? This is more of a kind of um, buttery Chardonnay, which is my chosen style. It's barrel fermented, which means that instead of being fermented in a steel tank, when it ferments, which is when yeast is just being converted into alcohol and um, carbon dioxide. Basically, the wood has a bit of a reaction in that as well and softens the um, flavours and get rid of that oakiness as well, depending on what kind of wood they've used. Um, new oak, you're going to get more butter. Um, older oak or oak that's been used before, you won't get as much butter. When I say buttery, I kind of mean creamy or like vanilla. Um, so yeah, it's like Chardonnay, but fresh, fruity, but also vanilla-y. Um, sort of honey notes, white flour. Um, I would happily drink this by itself, but it does go really well with kind of garlicky dishes, creamy sauce, pizza. And actually in the winter, I really enjoy a glass of sort of this kind of rounded off Chardonnay, like you'd get from a Chablis, just on its own. Um, I think it's such a sort of heartwarming grape that can do the sort of similar job that red does by the fire. It's 13.5%, so it's not, you know, really low either. Really good wine, that. Final one, which is also really exciting, is from Tesco. They're also not paying me, <laughs> um, just so we, we're clear. This is an English sparkling um, that Tesco sell under their finest label, but in partnership with Hush Heath, who make it for them. So Hush Heath is an English vineyard in Kent. Um, I've actually visited there. It's the only vineyard, um, and I have nothing against them for this, that didn't allow doggies, did it, Chunky? So you had to stay in the car. She's still bitter about it, aren't you, darling? It's a really lovely vineyard, though. 
it's sort of got a big orchard in the middle. Um, there's this fantastic new building. She's <laughs> like, I don't want to talk about that one. It sort of rolls down and then there's this orchard and then it rolls along a bit more and there's woodland, there's bees everywhere. Um, it just feels like a really healthy, healthy, healthy place. So this is £21. And um, I think that's really good value for an English sparkling. And Hush Heath's wines are actually really, really good. I think their vineyard was planted in 2002 by a chap called Richard Balfour. And so what you can expect from this sort of fresh English sparkling, often we refer to wines as coming from a terroir, which is one of those words that doesn't really have a definition. Orchard in the middle of Hush Heath Estate is an example of this. For me, their wines are so fresh with this real English apple, crunchy acidity to them. There's a really lovely bit of brioche as well, so you get that kind of um, Moorish taste you'd expect from um, champagne. And yeah, it's a really solid wine and 21 pounds I think is really good. So um, real um, well done to Tesco for securing that relationship because I think that's, um, going to do them a really good job. So actually, while I sort of said that they're good wines just to pick up, they'd make quite good festive wines because you've got a sparkling, you've got a red and you've got a white. Also two screw caps, which is great. So there you have it, three, three wines that you can go and pick up from supermarkets if you're last minute Christmas wine buying.